Ah. <laughs> Yay! Hey everyone! Hi! Welcome. We're Hi. live on Facebook. Hey. I am so excited to be here. I'm here wow. with Jennifer Hadley, Corinne Zuko, and John Mundy. And I just love this element of having a whole group come together. And we wanted to just be here and take questions and talk a little bit about healing, forgiveness, and teacher training. Because the four of us, thanks to Jennifer Hadley, have an amazing event coming up in March. And John Mundy and Jennifer Hadley are going to be offering a teacher training in Hudson Valley, New York, from March 14th through March 20th. And I just love the description on that, Jennifer and John, so much, because I know so many people really do want to step into a teaching function, like, like as a profession, like, how do you do that? How do you really show up as an inspiration and, and really just allow yourself to be moved by spirit? And the both of you are just so led in such a clear way. And I love that you're just offering this. And then starting on March 20th, Corinne Zuko and I are going to be showing up for, I know, Yay. <laughs> so exciting, for a Wednesday to Sunday retreat on healing, forgiveness, and we're going to be doing some Kundalini yoga, which I've never done before. And John, I know you're going to be there on the first day. Mm -hmm. And before we get into this, I, I just want to say personally that something happens when we're physically together. Like it's one thing when you can watch a video of someone or you can take an online course, but something happens <clears throat> physically to be together. I mean, we live in such a world of technology where we stay in our rooms by ourselves and we're just keyed into this little phone and Bill Free's in the house. He's come say hi to everybody. Hey you guys. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just making sure the technology's working. Thank Good. you. Yeah. I I want to make sure that because we're not all there now you're all in the screen. There you go. Okay. Okay. And there's just something amazing that happens when we're in a physical space together, because I know that A Course in Miracles, for me, has been about disrupting all my patterns. Mm -hmm. And I know when I'm at home, I have a routine. And so I've really given myself a gift of traveling quite a lot to be in physical spaces now with people. And I'm just so excited to be with the four of you. I don't know. Do you guys see the comments? Are there any comments? And no, I can't see them. You know what? I guess we have to go open that Facebook page. Okay. Yeah, you know, if people can say hello and tell us where you're joining in from, say hi. Um, that would be great. We can always respond to those comments later on. Yeah. So I'd love if you could, I wanted to ask you, Jennifer, to start us out because you were the one who had the inspiration to invite us all to come here. And I just want to say, Jennifer, and I want everyone to know, Jennifer and I, we've known each other since Chicago Course in Miracles conference. You were teaching. I was just there as a, as a student. And over the years, Jennifer and I have, have come to recognize we have a shared love of the topic of healing. And what's hilarious is we have conversations on quite a regular basis we don't even know hardly anything about each other's personal lives because the second we get on a call, we, we go straight into talking about healing. Just it's this topic that for me and I know for Jennifer is just so exciting. And, and this is one of the reasons I'm excited to come in person to have a group of people and just to be able to have this conversation from morning to night and through meals. So I'd love Jennifer, if you can start us off, just what this is, what this week is gonna be with the teacher training and the healing and forgiveness. 
Thank you, Lisa. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to backtrack for just a second because when I was in ministerial school um, now qu quite a number of years ago, and when I was in the practitioner training at the Agape International Spiritual Center, I got so ignited by the history of new thought. So Ernest Holmes and the Fillmores and Phineas Quimby and those beautiful, beautiful healers, and of course, Jesus. And Jesus said to us, even more shall you do. And healing was a part of Jesus's ministry. It was an extremely important part of the ministry. He, he was a, a, a person who really was about accomplishing the healing and transformation in the physical realm. He really was. And bringing the, the um, darkness to the light. That was really what he was about. And he has commanded us that we can do even more. And I really have taken that to heart. And so for me, this is an extremely vital part of my ministry is that people in the class people on the retreats, people in the trainings, they are having miraculous healings. And I'd like everybody to know it's possible for all of us. It's, it's not that I'm special or you're special or anybody is special, but every single one of the four of us have experienced extraordinary, miraculous healing on various levels. So the level of the mind, the level of emotions, and the physical level. We've either experienced it for ourselves or we've experienced it with other people through our shifting consciousness. This is how it has occurred. John has recovered from incredibly debilitating uh, cancer. Uh, Corinne has had amazing healing uh, of anxiety, is now teaching people all over the world how to do it for themselves to the world. And Lisa, I, I just remember our conversations over the last couple of years about you really coming to the awareness that all that illness brought you to a place of realizing you are not sick, you're not a body, and you have experienced extraordinary miraculous healing. And every single one of us would like others to know this is possible for them. It's not that we're special. We are not special. We don't feel special. We don't look special. We're not special. But we are in love with God. We are in love with these truth principles. And we're in love with feeling more and more lightness of being every single day. Mm -hmm. So we're coming together for this spring clearing healing retreat. And we're going to use forgiveness and miracles, being miracle minded, healing at the level of the mind, and for the fun of it, kundalini yoga, which is, a, a, we're going to do gentle, simple yoga that will just help us feel more balanced and more empowered and more comfortable to be in a retreat where, just so you know, folks, uh, you, you don't have to come to everything that we're doing, but we're going to be full on from morning to night. Because I always say, I was saying this to Lisa the other day, if we can get people in a room, I want to do as much as we possibly can before they leave again. <laughs> so I'm all in for it. It's completely fun for me. And we're doing this back to back with the how to create and lead a workshop training which is part of the ministerial teacher training program that we have at the power of love ministry but it's open to anyone who would like to develop their skills we're doing it back to back so people who come from a long distance can just immerse themselves and really go for it and uh, i was talking with folks yesterday who are in class with me who were saying that they came to the teacher training that John and I did last year. And while they aren't that interested, even in teaching themselves, they had so much healing and transformation at the training. It was a wonderful experience for them. And what also is wonderful is John and I had folks who were there with us who are now, they're doing their own workshops in everything from real estate to forgiveness and other kinds of topics as well. So um, you and I, Lisa, were talking last year that 
we see so many light workers mm -hmm. who are so gifted and so talented and have such a burning desire to share their gifts in the world. But what's stopping them is they don't feel confident and they don't feel qualified. Yeah. And so that's what John and I are helping people with. And it's a lot of fun. I love it. Thank you so much. I got, I'm looking at the messages now. We have a lot of people here from around the world. And if anybody has questions, I now can see your questions. If you want to type something in. And I just wanted to say quickly, Jennifer, I love what you just said about so many people now coming into a space of really wanting to step into sharing their gifts and their abilities. And I'm actually a promoter for B-School right now. And i getting so many emails from so many people with A Course in Miracles that feel guilty about doing something worldly. Like that they think I'm, I have this yearning to express myself from my wholeness. But I, I just thought that was worldly. I, I don't want to make myself a body. And this is what I really feel that Jesus is calling us now because he says, I need your hands, your feet, your ears, your eyes. And most of all, I need your willingness. I need for those individuals who are really ready to answer this call to bring God's love and his peace and his joy to the world, which is yourself. You're not carrying it to the world and making a world an illusion. You're literally carrying this to others so that you're healed together. And so it's, it's kind of an added bonus that I'm a B-School affiliate this year because I now get to hear from people on a spiritual path how they're stuck. They don't want to be stuck. They want to shine. And to have people who are uncompromising in the truth, like I know the four of us are, to be demonstrating that, like that you can be in the world and not of it. And... And Jesus says, now you stand at the edge of the world, holding each other's hands. Like now we're leading everyone out of suffering. So, John, would you like yes. to do thing? John, money in the house, everyone. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm excited too, because it's fun to, uh, one of the things that Jennifer mentioned the other day to me on the email was that what she really wants to do is to help people go deeper. And we really do want to go deeper. We want to really get rid of, not just play around with the surface, but to really look at what the blocks are to the awareness of love presence and then deal with those blocks. And the biggest block of all, as we all know from students of the Course in Miracles is guilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the sense that we have deliberately, although this isn't conscious, uh, deliberately broken away from God. We've not been paying attention. We've, we've, we've said to God, thank you very much, God. I'd rather do it myself. And then we go off and we do that. We're not, again, this isn't a conscious thing that we do. But at some point, we've got to awaken to the fact that that's what we have been doing so that we can then be going to go in there. And I just got through writing an article for Miracles Magazine that I called Search for the Center. And part of what I was talking about there was polishing the center. And what I meant by polishing the center was getting down to being well, we're taking the 10 characteristics of a teacher of God, for example. And we're just going to look at each one of those in terms of, like say, the second characteristic is honesty. All right, so, okay, well, we're honest, but can I take that deeper? You know, can I be even more polished in that? Uh, what about my patients? You know, can I take patience? Okay, I can be, a lot of people say, well, you know, they're patient, but at some point you get tried. The patience gets tried. Mm. Well, what is it that tries one's patience? That would be an interesting thing to look at. I mean, to, to go back to the point at which the ego kicks in, obviously, right? <laughs> we had temporarily put it in abeyance, but if it kicks in with some sort of irritation with the world, that can only, that doesn't happen. You know, it's interesting. We, we talk about people, somebody having the patience of a saint. <laughs> Why do we regard patience as saintly? And yet, you know, that's exactly the kind of characteristic that we want to be developing for ourselves. So it doesn't make any difference what the topic, whether it's honesty, tolerance, patience, et cetera. The idea is to go deeper in terms of looking at the stuck places, the blocks, and then honestly 
removing them, honestly setting it aside. And the forgiveness, of course, is the process uh, for doing that, as we all know. And, and the, the real forgiveness is forgiving ourselves <laughs> for not paying attention in the first place, for, for actually ignoring our responsibility. Uh, I, I like to place a lot of response, a lot, a lot of emphasis upon responsibility because it's such an important part of the teachings of A Course in Miracles. But we got to look at the place where we're being irresponsible. If you don't look, you can't fix it. You can't change anything. So it's a lot about looking, finding the, the unhealed places. It's interesting. There's a line in A Course which says, your function on earth is healing, period. Yeah. That's it. That is your main function. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. So if that's your main function, then why aren't we fulfilling our function? And of course, the thing that we we heal first is our own minds. So how are you going to help heal somebody else, help someone else heal their mind if if our minds are not quite together in the first place? And of course, healing the mind is then healing the body. That that kind of comes along. You know, every time G Jesus did a healing in the Gospels, it's always the same. He always follows it up by saying, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So, but the person had to believe that it was possible to be healed. Yeah. And then by being in the presence of a divine being, so to speak, that that would help them to facilitate that process. So we're just learning this process ourselves. Yeah. It's so interesting, John, that you say that because Jennifer and I just had a call last night on, and we oh, were talking about the very, because I'm on my way to Mexico tomorrow. For oh, you are. Week, and um, wow. I've been looking in the Bible and this is what I want to share when we're together in March is I looked at all the places in the Bible of all those healing stories that are recorded. Oh, yeah. They are all the same. They are yep. literally the, like yep. formula jesus uses yeah. he commands get up arise get like he doesn't oh. he doesn't do a process thing he knows you're not sick and then he says would you be whole and by your faith you are made whole and so jennifer and i just had this very animated discussion <laughs> last night for a half an oh, hour that's great. We're, we're thinking in the same vein and that's wonderful yeah. Corinne, want to join into this conversation? Oh, I have so much I want to say, and I know we don't have a ton of time, but um, I'll just pick up with what John just said about your function is healing. And Lisa, I love what you just brought up about Jesus and his, his command. And it goes back to this idea of conviction, of conviction in the truth, of just bringing our minds to that truth. And as you say, Lisa, watching our minds like a hawk, for the moment that we start to fade, because all it takes, I've seen this over and over again. I feel like my own awareness has gotten so fine tuned that if I, I, I don't really have bad days anymore, but when I do have a day where something starts going off and things just aren't in that smooth flow, I stop and I'm like, okay, where did I decide wrongly? And without fail, I can trace it back to either a judgment thought or a feeling of like making myself guilty over something without fail. And then I go, I bring my mind to that. I hand it over to the Holy Spirit. I let it go and things, things go back, you know, to, to shift and to be in that flow. So the sense of conviction and that willingness and that, that desire and ability to bring our minds to the truth and to have that fine tuned awareness is absolutely everything. And I mean, the four of us have, I know we have that conviction mm -hmm. and all of us coming together who are going to be joining in that conviction. What you said before, I think it was you, Jennifer, or something, or I don't remember who said this, but about the group, you know, there's something that happens, that power surge, as the course says, that when we come together, like it can move mountains. That's a known thing. And I, I come from a background of psychotherapy in my training and that's a known oh, yeah. thing. There's a group effect of when we come together there's bigger changes that happen in that group than, you know, just, we can do this work obviously on our own, but there's something about the group. So I'm so looking forward to this because the retreats where I've, I've spoken at before and been a part of have been absolutely magical because of this joining. And I know that this retreat is going to be the same. And I also want to add in, there's the Kundalini piece. Jennifer took me to my first Kundalini yoga class and it 
really changed a lot of things for me because although I haven't been attending Kundalini yoga, I've been back doing yoga on a weekly basis since Jennifer took me to that class. And the difference that I see in myself and even in my own ability, I mean, you know, I, I speak a lot about the course, but I still have a very busy monkey mind. Like it still can go all over the place. And what's so fun is to be able to see the piece that yoga brings in with immediately bringing you into stillness through, you know, the, the postures and Kundalini is a little bit different than the type of yoga that I've been doing. So I'm so excited that the Kundalini piece is going to be in this as well. Cause I think that combined with everything that we'll be doing with our forgiveness work with the course in miracles is just going to be so incredibly powerful. So I'm just mm -hmm. beyond excited and, and so excited. I can just feel that, that rising of this conviction on a, on a global level, you know, touching other people who, um, are even beyond, you know, Hudson Valley, New York <laughs> at that time. <laughs> I'm so grateful, Corinne, that you just expressed about the yoga, because I've been doing yoga again also. And I come from a background of, you know, I went to Endeavor Academy and it was all just, I'm not a body. I mean, it was so uncompromising to try the best that we could to stick to the teaching and to now realize that I was wrong about all of that. Like I was trying to escape from the body but the body's mm -hmm. not real. And so now it's it's been an incredible couple of years for me. And I did get sick. Like I, I was physically sick and and really standing still in this place of what does it mean to be so present in the body, but not as the body? Like that's that's just an incredible thing now that I really feel is is this new space that we're in. And and to be able to come together for one whole week, like that's amazing to me. Thank you, Jennifer, for setting this up. And there's going to be a link right here on this post where you can just come, just sign up, like whatever you have going on, what can be more important? Mm -hmm. You know, I just sent out this email today about when John Denver died, it changed my life. <laughs> and it, what the reason mm -hmm. for that, it was in October, 1997. And I've been in love with John Denver since the womb. I mean, I listened to him. He's, he's just somebody, I just love him. Oh yeah. And he was going to be in Cape Cod where I was living at the time in this small little bar. I'm sure I would have had a chance to meet him. And I didn't have any money. I was working as a waitress in a resort and I felt I don't have the money right now, so I'll go later. He's only 52 years old. I'm sure I'll go to a concert later. <laughs> and he died like two months later in that plane crash. And I swore on that day, I will never say later again. So when people say to me, Lisa, how do you do all these things? My God, you go everywhere, you do everything. It's because of that event. Like I recognize that we don't have later. Like when I, when you invited me to this event, Jennifer, and I knew John was coming and Corinne was coming and you were going to be there. I was like, are you kidding me? Like we're all going to be in one space together for all week <laughs> as a party. We're going to eat meals together. I mean, I know all, all of us, four of us. And I know when we go to these events, we don't just go in our rooms and then come during our teaching. We're there for breakfast, lunch, dinner, during the, all the exercises, that's amazing. Like it's, and I like that that's how Jesus wants us to be. No more teachers and students, like the playing field is equal. We're all together on this journey. So I would love to just take it around again. Everyone share anything else? Real quick, I'd like to share two things that you, you, you triggered, uh, you and Corinne and John triggered in me. One is that one of the most common and beautiful things I experience when I do in-person retreats that is so fulfilling is um, usually sometime on the first day, people start coming up to me and kind of taking me aside and saying, Jennifer, honest to God, I thought I was the only one who felt this way. Oh my God, all this time I've been thinking, I'm such an idiot. I'm such a, I've got all these problems. I have no... 
oh my God, there are so many people who feel just like I do. I'm in the right place. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that, that is just a celebration. It's people think that they don't have what it takes. We have what it takes. And when we come together, it emerges because we're inviting it to make itself known. And the second favorite thing, I was sharing this in class this week, that uh, when people come to the retreat and they walk in the door and they look so unhappy, they look like they're wearing a, a cloud. And within 24 hours, the cloud is gone. And they go, uh, and on the last day, they are luminous. They are literally just bursting out with light. I mean, they take that home to their family. And then a few months later, uh, they're telling me how their whole family, their workplace is being transformed. And you, you don't think that that can really happen in a few days. But if you have been to um, just conferences and things where people are giving talks, this is not that. This is not that. This is immersive. We, you are going, you're not going to be sitting and listening to us lecture. It's not that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. John, would you like to share any parting words? Parting? <laughs> no, I just, I know, I've, I've worked with Jennifer enough uh, to know that this stuff works. That working with her works in terms of the responses of the people who are there, the student, I don't know what the student, teachers, whatever. And it is transformative, there's no doubt about it. Simply because Jennifer will only go deeper <laughs> because she only will work on what's serious. We won't play around with the surface as I was saying earlier on. And that's what's so important in this world. You know, that we just take the time to, to really wake up to the awareness of who we really are enough of sleeping already, right? By the way, I just got through reading Rod Schoberg's uh, book, which he is still in manuscript format. And that's what that's all about. It's about really getting into dialogue with God. I mean, literally getting into dialogue with God. Now, you think you can't do that, but of course you can do that because God is right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now i mean any time and just waiting for us to acknowledge that it's not that he ran away from us we ran away from him so getting home could be really kind of pretty easy <laughs> can i share with you quickly a, a fun little thing that happened last friday night uh we have two grandchildren uh a 16 month old daughter granddaughter and a two and a half year old grandson and our daughter came over and she brought the kids and we we're gonna have dinner and but her husband was coming later. And anyhow, <clears throat> so she comes to the door with the granddaughter. And, and I said, where's Bryson, our grandson? She said, he's sleeping in the back of the car in his car seat. I said, I'll go get him. So I went <clears throat> and he was sound asleep. I mean, knocked out, sound asleep. I fussed to get the bottom part open and I finally get, and then get the top part. For some reason, I didn't understand the man mechanism. I had the hardest time and I was really kind of jerking him around. He was just sleeping through the whole thing. And then finally I get it open. And the minute I open it, he opens his eyes and he looks at me and goes, Papa. <laughs> and I can't tell you what wonderful feeling that was, you know? And I thought, you know, that's exactly like what it's going to be when we all wake up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we recognize, you know, <laughs> And the first thing you see is father. I mean, you're, you know, in this case, it's not daddy. So, but we see what we're, we, you never left. You were always there. <laughs> we're just off having some bad dreams somewhere. Exactly. I mean, hopefully it doesn't have to be a bad dream, but any kind of, anyhow, a dream in, in any event that we now awaken from. So we're working on waking up here. That's what we're working on. That's right. Moving deeper and looking up at the same time. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, John, for that. I love what you said about wor working with Jennifer before and, and that Jennifer always takes us deeper. Right. And that's been mm -hmm. my experience, too. I can remember, Jennifer, when I first met you, I didn't I didn't know about you at all. I'd never heard about you when I went to that conference in Chicago. I think it was in 2012. 13. And I just went to one of your your talks and I remember sitting like these my eyes wide open at you and you're so funny 
And I, I remember uh, getting chills as I speak about it, remembering that moment. And I don't know if you remember, I chased you out of the room like like right. some starstruck person, like because you, Jennifer, were the first person I'd really ever seen in a spiritual realm that was so authentic, so grounded and practical and funny and smart and you and just no airs, no spiritual teacher guru type thing going on. And I remember like, that's how I want to be. I want to be just like Jennifer as that authentic, funny, smart self as the light. And I really feel like that's, that's what these spaces can do for each other. Like we can really just come into our own true self. So Corinne, I think I was at that same session in the Chicago conference when Jennifer was speaking <laughs> and I was there as an attendee and I just, I, I ditto and resonate with everything that you just said, Lisa, about Jennifer. So um, I just want to pick up again, first of all, John, your story about Papa, <laughs> just, we're going to be like, God, Father, oh, oh, <laughs> God, it was just a dream. Thank goodness. I love that story. Um, <laughs> I just want to speak to, again, the idea about going deeper and this being such an immersive, hands-on, we're going to shed the old patterns, we're going to drop all that ego stuff. Um, I literally, you know, my, my background as a therapist, I used to do so many workshops on stress and mindfulness. I literally cannot talk about these things anymore in the same type of way that I used to. I literally cannot. I, I have to go to that deepest place of looking at, you know, who am I identified as? Am I identified as Corinne or am I identified as the son of God? Like it, it's all about our identity, the shift in identity. And if, if we're going on that level from the get-go, I am positive that this is why I healed from the anxiety disorders that I used to live with because I was, I went after that I, that, that sense of self. I didn't just want a happy life or an easy life. I wanted that shift in identity. I wanted to recognize and fully remember who it is that I am and we all are. And I'm not saying that I stay there all the time, but I've touched it enough to have that conviction now. So I really just wanted to highlight that piece again, that this isn't going to be just us lecturing and talking. This is going to be diving deep for real lasting change and miracles. So I'm so excited. Woohoo! Woohoo! I, I love that you just said that, Corinne, because that is probably the most important point for me personally that this isn't about having a happy dream or a better life like we're we're raising the bar as high as we can go to identify with that self and not try to patch up the body not trying to heal the body not trying to change or improve but to really shift over into our true nature our true self which is the son of god and start there like that's, that's why I'm going, like, I really, I always go to these events knowing it's going to be a whole new moment for me. I never go as a teacher. It's always like, all right, wow. Like, where's Jesus leading me? Yeah. And to be able to go there and to say, I'm going to be in that space without my usual routine, mm -hmm. without my work schedule and to just to be there and see what, what new things are presented for me. So I'm really happy you brought that up. And Jennifer, would you like to close us? You know, I, I would love to just say thank you to the three of you for saying yes. You all said yes right away. And, and you, you totally are trusting that it will be beautiful and magnificent. And what I love is that we can go forward and really be following spirit, be spontaneous in the moment. And that's, that's where the healing is. Mm -hmm. it, it, healing is, is miraculous. It's in our mind. And now is the time for us to seize that moment. So I, 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 that's all I'd just like to say is thank you. And to all those who are thinking about it, know that we have early bird specials on right now and, and we do something that most people don't do which is we have payment plans 
and we will really help you out. If you would like to come, we will do whatever we can to we'll lengthen the payment plan. We, we really will work with you to help you come and we'll help you arrange carpools and roommates, whatever it takes. We're, we're all in for this healing experience. So come join us. Bring a friend. Thank you, Jennifer. I have to t I have to tell a funny story, Jennifer, and it's about you, John Mundy. Oh. So Jennifer and I were talking on the phone the other day and she was telling me about you and uh, Jennifer talking about, well, what will we do? What will, what's the plan for the week? Mm -hmm. And Jennifer said she doesn't do her retreats like this or her trainings like this. It's really like, we're just going to show up. We're totally committed to being in this space and I know it's going to be good. And she told me that you kept saying, well, what will we teach? And she, she just kept telling you, I don't know, but I know it's going to be good. <laughs> and it was. And it, it always is. She's right. It was. And it is. Time. And it's, it's, always, awesome. it's always way bigger than we can ever plan for. So yeah. I'm excited for this week myself. And right. like Jennifer said, just if you are having any hesitation and you really feel like you want to come, please just reach out. It's th this really is always in just the saying yes, like, yes, I would really love to come. And I don't know how. And this is the place where all of us land in every moment of our life, really. And Jesus gives us a training for it. Like, OK, don't stay in your isolation and hope something happens. Reach out and say, I want to come and just and just push the button and those prices are really amazing like those prices jennifer they include everything they include your room the meals all the workshops so i'm going to put a link here for you and just thank you so much for... go ahead jennifer actually the rooms and the meals are separate from the retreat cost okay but the meal the, the button there that's that's on there that's the so you, you book your, we have a fantastic rate for the room and meals, but you book that through the resort. And okay. Yeah, so. Okay, very good. So thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, Jennifer, thank you. John, Corinne. Yep. Thank you, Lisa, for hosting. I love you guys. Love you thank all you. for watching. Bye for now. Bye everyone.